Hi, everyone. This is Rob Roy of LA Wave Options, and welcome to Trade Finder Live. If you're new with us and we have new people every single week, let me give you a quick rundown of how this works. First of all, we have to go through this wonderful disclosure slash disclaimer uh, that the powers that be um, make us show you. And it is important, so I don't want to make too light of it. If you are brand new with us, please take a screenshot of it. Read it in detail in your leisure. Two most important things that they want us to make you aware of is number one, we are not registered to give individual investment advice in the United States. And number two, we have a lot of international viewers. And just looking at the last YouTube uh, video, there were people from all over the place. And I like it when people from certain countries call out, hey, if you're watching from this country, um, I have a note or uh, give me a like or whatever. So that's pretty interesting. But since we do have viewers and subscribers from all over in different uh, countries, any pricing that we're talking about is assumed to be in US dollars unless noted otherwise. So with that, the process of the Trade Finder is we'll talk a little bit about where the market is and it's been spot on with what we've been talking about in our S&P updates on YouTube. Then we'll go through and show any uh, closed alerts that we may have done for our subscribers. So you can get an idea of what our alert subscribers uh, benefit from. And we've got a whole bunch of them to show you tonight because there's a really interesting phenomenon that's occurring that is going to be the uh, uh, main part of the theme for tonight's uh, broadcast. So we'll show you those. Then we'll go back and we'll look at case study considerations because in Trade Finder, we look for uh, potential trades, but their considerations. It's up to you to execute them different than the alert service that we have for our paid subscribers where we send out the actual alert, we send out any adjustments and we send out when to exit. But with this, you're uh, on your own as far as entries, any adjustments and exits, but we give you ideas. And so that's a, a pretty cool thing. It's been very popular. After that, um, we'll go through and look for any potential new ones. And at the end, for whatever time we have left, uh, we'll just open it up, open forum, Q&A. Uh, this has been a very popular part of the uh, uh, webinar each and every week. You throw out your stocks and we'll look at them with our technical indicators. Again, not giving you uh, individual advice on what to do, just simply showing you what our indicators um, think about any individual stocks that you have. So that's it. That's the process. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. Take a look at the market. Oh, by the way, I will take all the questions at the end. If you have a question while we go through uh, the webinar, please ask it at the time. Just understand that I'm not ignoring. Well, I guess I am, but <laughs> I'll take the questions at the end. If I do it in between, it throws off the, um, the rhythm and the flow of the webinar and I get distracted. So uh, ask them when they come up, and then we'll come back through and get to as many as we can at the end. Please understand, if your question is not answered at the end, it's not that it wasn't a good question or we are specifically ignoring your question. It's just that we run out of time. We'll get to as many as we can, um, and then we invite you to come back if your question wasn't answered and ask it again next week. So uh, please go through, and, and I can see some of you are doing it already. Uh, but here's where the market is. And we've talked about this, and I mentioned it in the last uh, YouTube video with the S&P. You thought you were done seeing this zigzag that we've shown for I don't know how long uh, with the fact that the S&P was going to go up to 381, which it did. And look what's happened since then. It has acted as what you would expect, a Fibonacci point of support resistance. So it bumped its head for an entire week on that level. We tried to move down here. Now, that was the Friday before the long holiday weekend, uh, Martin Luther King holiday on Monday. So I pose the question, is that just squaring of positions going into the holiday or is something afoot here as far as a correction? And it appears it was just people squaring positions because we immediately turned and went right back up. Now you can see that 381 is acting as support. We tried to close below it. So that was an attempt by the shorts, they're playing games right now. But the problem is the shorts aren't in control right now. The longs are. This is a very unusual circumstance that's going on. And that, again, it's going to be the theme uh, for tonight's webinar. But you can see we traded down below 381. 
back above it. So one, two, three, four, five days in a row. So following one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days that we traded below 381, using that as resistance. Now five days, we've used 381 as support. So that's 13 days that the 381 level has acted as support or resistance. So if that doesn't tell you the power of Fibonacci levels, I don't know what it does. So um, you're just impossible to to convince if uh, if you can't see that there's some significance there uh, at that level. So 381 is holding a support. And so if it breaks below that, I mean, there's always still a possibility that we come back down and retest 61.8. That's well within Elliott Wave rules for extension patterns. However, if we don't break below that level, the next level is 420. And we've had all of our humorous references to the number 420, um, especially with uh, looking at the uh, ETF THCX. But if we do break below 381, remember that it's not just one day below it, we have to have a confirmation date. So that was the key here. On the Friday of January 15th, when we broke below, turned around and came back up on the 19th, which was Tuesday, the first trading day again, after the holiday, there was no follow through. So had that been another lower uh, low there or lower than the 15th, then we would have looked at coming down to the 61.8% level. But since there was no follow through or confirmation day, then we still have to look right now, the level in play is 420. It's subject to change. And I just wanna reiterate this again, the C wave of this big zigzag pattern, the ABC pattern went to 381. That's what we talked about for months. It did its job. Now we try to decide, is there momentum or um, force, whatever you want to talk about, energy to move to the 381 level? We like to look at our technical indicators, uh, confirming indicators, and you can see the DMI is not really giving us, it's kind of just as ho-hum as the market is right now. It's not looking super strong. Uh, it was as we moved up towards 381, as you can see back here at, towards the end of December. But since we moved into January, it's been kind of, I don't know. So there's not a whole lot of decisiveness as to where the market's going to go right now. That's not been the move of individual stocks. Now, if you watch anything on the financial news, you've probably heard of what's going on with GameStop. So let's take a look at the chart, GME of GameStop. And it's insane, really, what's happened here. Look where the stock was. Back on the 21st of January, the stock closed at $43. Closed at $43 on January 21st. And today, on the 26th, it closed at $147. More than a 100-point move in five days. That's ridiculous, right? So what I wanted to talk to you about is there is an assault on shorts right now. Normally, short sellers have a really bad name, right? And you, you've heard all the things about George Soros and all the other ones and stuff. Short selling is a important part of the markets because there has to be a buyer and a seller for every trade. If you're wanting to buy something, somebody has to be willing to sell that to you. Now, it may be somebody that owns it and they're willing to sell it at the price you're wanting to buy it from, or it could be somebody that says, hey, it's made a move, right? Because you're wanting to get out. So somebody else might say, yeah, I agree with you. It has made a move. You're wanting to get out. I think it's going to go back in, back down. So they sell a short position. And the two of you, Mary, you're getting out on the move to the upside. They think the move to the upside is extended. They're looking to make money on a downward move from there. And you have a trade. Without short sellers, that wouldn't be possible. So remembering that we have to have a buy and sell on every single transaction, whether it's stock or options or any sort of security derivative, et cetera, there has to be a buyer and a seller. Short selling is a very important part of the market. Now, short sellers get a bad rap, right? Because they're the ones that are wanting things to go to the downside. And people that have IRAs, 401ks, mutual funds, 
investment type contracts where they're putting money away and hoping that at some point in time in retirement, they'll have a whole lot more than the money they put away so they can enjoy a nice retirement. So the short sellers are their quote enemies, right? But again, it's a function of the markets that's necessary. So normally they get a bad name, but right now with stuff that's going on like this, there's an absolute assault on short sellers. Every single day, there are charts just like this with GameStop, and there is nothing, zero fundamentally, that's moving this stock as, as this is here. And a, another one um, that you can hear, and it, these, these are the Robinhood guys, okay? So they're the ones that are talking about it. It's, it's on... Um, there's YouTube groups that are showing up. There's website stuff. This is so reminiscent. People are talking about this. This is so reminiscent of what happened in 1999. I can't tell you. I was trading options in 1999. I've been around that long. And back then it was the internet. Anything .com, IE, whatever. There were people that would get together, the, you know, the uh, computer nerds or whatever. They'd get together and they would work around the clock, four or five of them to create a business with some sort of an idea. And they would put together a business model and a website, and then they'd go public and they buy it. They had zero earnings, zero revenues, nothing. But because it was internet based and the internet was the great unknown back then, people would buy it. And you would see stuff like this. Companies would come public and these guys would make millions of dollars because their stock went public and they made zero dollars. Some had no sales whatsoever and they were still making money. But even though I lived through that and that was crazy, this is really becoming this to an extreme. So this was already moving to the upside with AMC. This is another one that was occurring. And then we come out with yesterday, they announced that they've got some debt funding. So AMC looked like they may be going out of business but it jets back to the upside. So this, these are some examples of this assault that I'm talking about on short sellers. Now, think this through with me um, before we move on. Why would this be occurring? The longs have the power now, right? There's excess liquidity from all the money that the Federal Reserve is injecting into the economy, these stimulus programs that the government has put in the first one and now another one that's coming out there's a lot of liquidity so they have the power the longs they are forcing the hands of the short sellers they're forcing them to cover their short positions and they're eating massive losses on moves like this and GameStop those are significant hits to them but once they get to the point once the longs get to the point or call them the small the smart traders get to the point where they've washed out all of the shorts, there's no resistance to the downside. So if you're a trader that's thinking, I wanna make money to the downside, because we all know stocks move down normally faster than they move up. <laughs> a little bit hard to make that argument with what's been going on uh, lately here in January. But, you know, and I, I mentioned to our subscribers that I felt that January was gonna be far more volatile that we were gonna have a great month and we have had a great month for our subscribers in January and it has been volatile. This isn't exactly what I was expecting though. I wasn't necessarily expecting this all out attack on these shorts that's occurring. It has created the volatility I thought was gonna come. Just this isn't the way I thought it was all gonna play out, but you know, our subscribers are enjoying it. So, you know, whatever happens moving forward, we'll see. But think about this. So you're a trader and you like trading to the downside because normally stocks move down faster than they move to the upside and they're short sellers and the stock starts to move to the downside. Well, at some point in time, some shorts may say, oh, okay, that's good. I've had enough. I've made enough money to the downside and they cover their short position. How do you cover a short position? If you're shorting a stock, you sell that stock to open. How do you cover that short position? You buy it to close. So if there's this group of people that are commonly known as the smart traders that are looking to trade to the downside and they know there's heavy short interest 
then they know that, man, it's going to be a bumpy road on the way down because we're going to go down and some people are going to say, oh, okay, I'm good. And they're going to buy. That's going to boost it back up. Then we come down. Some other people are going to say, oh, I'm good. And that's going to bounce it back up again. And there's a really bumpy road to the downside. But what if they can wash out all the shorts? What if they can clear them out? Get rid of the shorts. Then there's nobody on the way down. What you're going to see is at some point in time, and I can't tell you when this is going to occur, but at some point in time, with this kind of craziness that's going on in the market, you're going to see some vacuum type moves to the downside. So the volatility that I thought was going to occur, again, is occurring in a little slightly different way, but this is just going to add to it. And as we move forward, there's going to be more and more volatility. There's going to be more of this. And at some point, when the longs have figured out that, okay, we've run out all the shorts and anything that was heavily shorted, there's no more short sellers, watch what happens then and you see the turnaround. Now, we didn't catch GameStop or AMC, but we've caught quite a few of them. So let me go through and show you some of the ones that we have. Here's OSTK that we just closed out today. So here are the charts. These are ones that our subscribers actually were in. So there's a pretty vertical move to the upside there. It's the same type of scenario. So that was 119% gain that our subscribers enjoyed in 18 days. Here's Workhorse. Take a look at this chart on Workhorse. Another straight move to the upside. This stuff doesn't happen from fundamentals. There's no earnings report, nothing. There was no news. Nothing came out to cause this to happen. It's just boom, boom, you go vertical. So you're like, okay, cool. Let's take the profit and move on. And then PLTR, watch this one. Again, these are all actual alerts on our website that were sent to subscribers. And this one continued to go to the upside. You have to get to the point where you think, all right, nobody gets out at the exact tops or the exact bottoms. But if you look at the chart, this one actually continued up from here, but we still made a really nice game and we were happy with it. And that's the point where you say, you know what? You don't ever look back at making a nice profit. We made 43%. That's okay. Look at this one on PETS. Now tell me how you justify this from fundamentals. We're moving to the upside here and we had a strangle on this position. We were expecting a breakout with all the support at 29. We were just about to take it off because the long option was about to move in the money. And then boom, it runs right back down for no real reason. And look what happened over the past two days. This massive move back to the upside. So we were able to take this off and it looked like, oh man, we had a little gain there and we let it get away. And it turns around and runs back up 46% that we got out of that one. And then watch this move on iRobot. That is not a misprint. That is an 802% gain that we've got out of iRobot. Look at this. Talk about initiating the short sellers. I've talked about this to our subscribers for quite a while saying, I don't know why this stock is going up. I don't know why it's a $100 stock. Are there that many people that are buying those little round Roomba things that, you know, are automatically vacuuming? Really? Is there that many people that are buying those things? A lot of people obviously felt the same way because it was heavily shorted. And look what happened. An explosive move to the upside. The people in our adjustment process made a 800 and nearly 3% gain. 803% gain. Those that were only in the adjustments made over 850% on that move. That's what's going on right now. So again, as I mentioned, I expected January to be volatile, but I didn't expect this war on the shorts to occur. That I didn't see coming. I just thought we were going to have a heightened volatility. And we still have a VIX above 23. So these are the things, every single one of those charts I just showed you, other than GameStop and AMC, our subscribers enjoyed those profits. So if you've been watching this, if you've been on TradeFinder for a while and you're a YouTube person and you haven't subscribed to our alert service yet, what the hell are you waiting on? Really look at the amount of money that you could have made just in the past week when all those were closed out. So we're not, I don't think this is going away anytime soon. And the really cool part of this is once this stuff is over, once the longs 
or the smart money figures out that they've run all the shorts out of the market, then the same thing happens to the downside. What happens to all the Robin Hood guys then that are trading these high momentum, low dollar stocks that are so reminiscent of what was going on in the dot-com era in 1999? They're going to get wiped out. They're going to get wiped out. That's what's going to happen. It happened in 1999. It happened in 2007. You see the same thing happen. The groups forming on social media. It's, it's just, it's a cycle. It occurs over and over again. And I've seen it so many times. Don't be part of that. Don't get caught up in that. Don't think you're smarter than the market. Nobody is. Nobody is. If you're a new trader and you've enjoyed some great gains on Robinhood, congratulations. I'm super happy for you. I really am. Be careful. It's not that easy. I promise you, it's not that easy. And if you just continue to think so, and I've talked to some guys, some friends that are like, well, let me show you how to produce. I don't need to learn puts. The market always goes up. I've heard that said to me. That's insanity. When you hear that, you know those people are not long for having a trading account. Really, at some point in time, they're going to get wiped. This will not last forever. I don't care how much stimulus the government is injecting or any of those things. This will end. We are going to do one of these trade finders where we have these kind of charts to the downside. Again, I don't know when that's going to be, but it's coming. Just please trust in that. And that's what 25 plus years of trading tells you, that that's it's coming. This is the third time I've seen it. This is not a new phenomenon. It's a cycle. It's cyclical. All right. All right. I'll get off my soapbox. I promise. So let's go ahead and uh, look at some of the uh, case study considerations from, uh, let's go back to January 5th, ACGL. I don't think this one's really broken out much yet. No, it really hasn't done anything. Uh, it looked like it was going to break to the upside. And then here we are right back at the support area. So we're trying again, maybe it breaks to the downside, maybe we're just testing it. This one hasn't really done much yet. Um, then, well, we already know this one. This was one that we looked at. So this was one of our case study considerations on January 5th. Did you follow this? This is Workhorse. We sent this to our subscribers. This is the one I showed you. This is one of the ones we sent. I hope you followed it because that was a really nice game. So we had, ACGL hasn't done anything, but Workhorse has more than made up for it. So those were the January 5th ones. All right, now let's look at Duke Energy, which was our case study consideration on the 12th. And it's, it's trying. It's trying to break to the upside. Where's the 12th? Let's go back here and find the 12th of January is right there. So that's when we looked at it. And so that was a close of 88.93. And we closed now at 92.92. So we're up $4 uh, on the movement. Probably not enough to make much of a profit in a strangle if you all followed that one. Uh, but we're getting there. It's starting to move. And then last week we looked at, and we're going to look at this SQ too. Um, because that one came up when somebody was asking about it. But XLK, uh, the technology sector, and look look what's happened there. So hopefully you follow this one, because if we go back to last week on the 19th, look where we were. We were at 129. And where we are now is closed at 134. So that's a nice gain on a directional trade on an ETF like this. So again, hopefully you've follow that one. So you can see, and this is the kind of results that we've been getting out of our case study consideration since we started TradeFinder. How, I don't even remember how long ago it was, over a year now, I guess, um, that we've been doing this or, or somewhere around that time frame. Now, let's look at SQ and see, because we I, I made a note of this one. And we were last week. SQ on 119 here. And you can see that we had this, I've talked about possibly sending this out as one of our high value strangles. Um, I didn't do it just, I mean, for just being fully transparent. And it's just, it's really hard for me 
on these strangles when the ADX is that high. I know this stock can still break out when the ADX is above 13. That's the number that I put in the search. I like to see ADX is below 13. If you have an ADX above there, it can go sideways for a while and then break out. Well, when you're putting on a strangle, every day that goes by, tick, 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 that's time decay coming out every day. And so the longer that goes on before the breakout, the more of a, a loss position you're in before the actual breakout occurs. So it's, it's just, it's hard for me to pull the trigger on these when you have an ADX at up, up 25, you know, getting down there, if it's not below 13, you know, but it's in the area. Okay. That's just a tough one. Um, but we close at 227 and now we're down to 209. So I didn't look at what an actual strangle position would cost on this or exactly what the profit would be probably a little bit at this point in time, likely not a whole lot because it hasn't moved a ton since then, but it's moved enough to where the put gain should be offsetting the call loss. And we should be getting to the point where if this continues to the downside, then it starts to make some money. So there's been a, a breakout, this breakout day here that occurred on the 21st, that doesn't count because there was no follow through day. So then we reset. So we moved down on the 25th and today we did get a follow through day on SQ. So at this point in time, we're looking for more movement to the downside. We might find a little bit of support here. And if that doesn't hold probably some support right there. So in this whole area, right around 200, if we get down there could be an area of support. So it might bounce a little bit, whatever from there, um, but it, it has broken to the downside uh, out of that pattern, uh, even with uh, a VIX that was, you know, 25 or maybe even just a touch above 25. So that's uh, a review of our most recent case study considerations. Let's go ahead and look at um, potentially some current case study considerations for this week, and then we'll get to Questions, I can see that there's a whole bunch of them uh, over there already. So on our pre-computed list, for those of you that are new, this program that I'm showing you is called Profit Source. You can find out more information on it at ProfitSource.com. A lot of people really like it, especially Elliott Wave traders. It's extremely clean to look at. And as you've noticed, I don't put a whole lot of stuff on there because if you've looked at some other Elliott Wave websites, you can see that there's ones and Roman numeral ones and large A's and small A's and big ones with circles. And it just, it, there's so much stuff on the charts. It gets so detailed, you can't really see the pattern. And I prefer to see the pattern. And here I take off the ABCs and stuff because there's tools here that they've created that allow me to do it myself, which I would rather do, not because I'm better than the computer. I'm not saying that. It's just like, I wanna see the pattern and then apply those rather than having all that stuff on there. And then over here, you can see e EWO bullish, um, cor uh, corrective bullish impulse, consolidating. Those are the scans. Those are my indicators that I looked at or that I look at and that we use for LA Wave options. And the people at Profit Source said, well, we can just incorporate those indicators and put them on there for you. So you don't have to go through and run an individual search every single time. So it's automated is why this is under pre-computed scans. So it's all pre-computed. So I can look at this and say, okay, there's five stocks under the bullish impulse. So I don't have to run that search and wait for it to run through every optionable stock that exists in the market. It saves time. So if, if you're an LA Wave Options subscriber, and you have profit source, you can follow along as well. This is a fantastic learning tool because our subscribers will consistently ask questions of, hey, I saw this stock on the search result. You didn't send it out as an alert. Can I ask why? Or I looked at this one and it didn't come out as an alert. Why? Or why did you send this one out as an alert? I'm not necessarily understanding. Anyway, it's a great learning experience for our subscribers to be able to have this software program and follow along with us. So again, profitsource.com if you wanna learn more about it. All right, so here's the five. Let's go through and, and take a look at these. 
that are showing up on the bullish side. Uh, CERN, you can see that's a pretty nice move to the upside. So here's my daily process. This is what I do on a daily basis. I run these searches, or now they're pre-computed, so I don't have to run them anymore. I'm just used to saying that. So then I'll take all this stuff off, and I'll bring the DMI back on, but I take all this stuff off and just look at the pattern. Okay, and then I'll say, all right, let me see the DMI. Ooh, the ADX is curling up, but it's not up to 20 yet. So for me, I want to see the ADX breaking above 20 between those two directional indicators. If you were to go on the internet and look up uh, how the DMI works, most people will say that the trigger for entry using the DMI is when the ADX breaks above 25 and it's between the two directional indicators and there's good separation. I look at 20 for a couple of reasons. One, I've also changed the parameters from 1420 periods to 1321. So it's slightly a little bit more aggressive. So I need a more aggressive ADX to keep up with that. So I look at when the ADX breaks above 20. Well, if you just put in the search ADX breaking above 20, you're gonna get the, when the ADX is above 25, 30, 35, et cetera. And so I put it lower than that so that I can see, let me see, let me watch this when the ADX is rising and see if it actually does break above 20. And so this would go on a watch list. In other words, this is not something that we would look to send out as an alert to our subscribers now, even though you can see we have a pretty nice move here to the upside, and it's that 45 degree angle that you've heard me talk about before that I really like. It's in a wave three. There's a lot to like about this chart, but if you have a system, you have to follow your system. And so I wanna see that ADX actually break above 20. And uh, we'll see if that happens. Note today that the stock moved to the upside, but the positive directional indicator moved down. That's not the kind of support you're looking for to put on a bullish trade. And remember when we're in a wave three, at some point in time, that wave four is gonna form. And the way profit source works, it's not telling you, hey, the wave four has begun. This is showing you that if the wave four were to begin now, that's the likely target. So it's a projection of if the wave four were to start, where could you expect that wave four to end? It's not telling you the wave four is in, is in, we're starting. So if the wave three continues up, those two adjust, both the four and five adjust, which is one of the great things about Elliott Wave and one of the great things about Profit Source is you gotta adjust, the market changes every single day. And so if you're gonna stay just rigid and hard fast and, and not move, then you're gonna have trouble. You gotta be able to adapt and be willing to adapt to what the market is telling you. It changes what, what you think may have occurred a few weeks ago could be totally different today. So it's dynamic is what I'm trying to say. The market's dynamic, so don't be a static trader. Those two don't work very well together. So let's go back and look at uh, DCI, uh, Donaldson. Not super familiar with uh, this company. So to save time, I'll just go ahead and leave the DMI on here. Now that's better. Okay, so the ADX is moving up and it's about to break above 25, which if you're more conservative, um, you'd be happy. Now look, we've had moved to the upside and the positive directional indicator is moving up, the negative directional indicator is moving down. That's more like what you want to see out of your confirming indicator. So when I see that, I'm like, all right, now let's put the LA wave on and see what's going on. And we're in a wave three here. We've had some consolidation that we're breaking out of. So there was a breakout and a follow through today. So it looks, it looks like this stock, again, I think I may have traded this one time in the past. I know I've traded the symbol DCI before, but not very often. So let's take a look at what the options look like here, but it does look like there's a pretty good chance that this one heads up to that target uh, in the 65 range. So DCI. Well, there's some liquidity, it's not super liquid. Actually, the spreads are not that wide considering how non-liquid the options are. 
there's just a handful of strikes in each month that have some liquidity. March doesn't have month much, but there's some in May. There's a lot in February, but that's too soon anyway. But um, even though the 30-ish Delta going out to May doesn't have a whole lot of options, the spread isn't that wide. So, um, you know, when the spreads aren't that wide, it's, it's okay. So that's interesting. So let's leave that one on the screen and then go to checkpoint. We already actually have this one as an alert for our subscribers. So probably won't want to do anything here other than uh, let's go ahead and show you what it's looking like. And you can see with the Ellie wave pattern here, 61% wave four correction. Doesn't get any better than that. 61.8 is my favorite Fibonacci corrective level because it's the strongest one. That's why. And I love it when the wave four, look at a doji there. So we came down and tested it. Now we're moving back to the upside. You can see the DMI is setting up. ADX isn't above 20 yet. So I wouldn't send out anything new necessarily right now, but it looks like it's building. You're starting to see a little bit of pattern here of higher lows as well, just for general technical analysis. But it does look like that target price up around 145 plus is well within reason. But again, as I said, we already have an alert on this for subscribers. I mean, it just looks really good. Now, what we want to see is a new close right there, which we got today. But does today matter? No. Remember, you have to have the second day of follow through or confirmation day. So if we close higher tomorrow, then that's likely it. We're off and running to the upside here uh, on checkpoint. So we'll continue to keep an eye on that. So leave that one on the screen. Um, it's tough to do one that we've already done, but that's a really good looking pattern. Big lots. And uh, just, you know, and one, another one of the discount retailers. So they, they buy a lot of stuff that other companies want to get rid of, and then they sell it. Same type of thing as Ross and other stores along those lines. But um, turn the alley wave on. It's not in a five wave pattern and hasn't been since August. So we're going through here and this, we've had a whole bunch of flats here. So I could label all this stuff through here. Boom, 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 boom. So we need to break out of that range. Uh, it looks like based on this DMI that there's support there. You can see the ADX is above 20, it's moving higher. It looks like there's some support here for the stock breaking above this level, but we, we closed here at 55 and then we closed at 55 two days in a row and then phew, it couldn't hold it. Now we've tested that level in October. We tested it again in November. Now we're testing it again in January. So to go long here, I think you would want to be patient. It's not that overbought from the 10-day moving average, but I think you really want to see a close here above 55. The ADX is only barely above 20. There's plenty of room there. So if the stock can break back above that 55 level, then we got something working here uh, for com continued and uh, potential move to the upside. But I, I just think from a conservative standpoint, you want to see it close a couple days back above there. Uh, ATHM, Auto Home, and uh, just let's take all this off and keep that DMI because that looks kind of interesting. Look at that. ADX moving to the upside. You can see this series of higher lows on the ADX. So it's building um, to the upside. We haven't quite hit 20 yet, but boy, that's awfully close. And you have the positive directional indicator moving up, the negative directional indicator moving down. That's what you want to see when the stock is moving to the upside. We've broken above resistance here. Um, Doji yesterday and break to the upside today. Let's look at the LA wave. We're in a wave three still with a target all the way up at 130. So yeah, you would like to see that ADX break. Maybe it takes one more day to get that ADX above um, the 20 point here. It sure looks like it wants to do that. And I've said this so many times in the past that when you look at a chart like that on the DMI and you're thinking, that ADX is going to break above 20. 
you can't say that. You can't jump the gun. It will look like that and then turn and go back down. It's like, you know, a, a sucker punch. It draws you in. It's like, there's no way that ADX doesn't break above 20. And in this case, maybe it does. But I'm just telling you that in the past, there's been setups that look just like that in the DMI and then the ADX curls and goes down. And it doesn't break to the upside. So uh, when you have your indicators, you need to trust them. Um, there's plenty of room. There's 15 more points for this stock to move to the upside. Give it another day and see if we get that ADX up above that 20 level. Maybe towards the end of the day tomorrow, if we're following through with this move. Let's see, are we overbought? Not really. We touched the 10 day new moving average on the low. So, you know, give it its chance to, to break above there and then enter. So, uh, that one, that's a watch list one. So you see me write this each and every week. I have a watch list and I, and I look at these. And so, I mean, Workhorse was one from the watch list that we found here that went out, out as a, a, an alert to our subscribers. So uh, I, I follow these. So ATHM uh, is on the watch list. And we'll see if that ADX breaks to the upside tomorrow. Um, but before that, we can't. Big lots, that's that's a watch list too. Um, and that one needs to, so I usually make these notes here on what the stock needs to do. So that needs to break above 55. I know it sounds like I'm being a little conservative here, but I am. So hopefully it does sound that way. Um, checkpoint, again, we're already in this one and it would be hard to say, okay, well, it's okay to put one on, you know, checkpoint when we didn't do it on ATHM. So, you know, we're going to stay there. Uh, and that brings us to DCI, which, again, it doesn't have a whole lot of open interest, but the spreads are surprisingly not that wide. We can go out to May, and they're not that expensive either. The options aren't that expensive. So you can go out to May and get a 33 Delta for $1.85 all the way out to May. That's pretty cheap. Um, looking at the 65 strike, which brings that right up that Delta curve. So we're going vertically up, which we like. So I think what we need to do is mark for this week, um, DCI as our case study consideration for the week with the target price at uh, $65. But we got a couple of really good ones on the watch list though. ATHM, Checkpoint, you know, if, if we get an opportunity to add to it for our subscribers, we will. That ADX moves to the upside and then uh, big lots breaking above 55. If it does that, then you have a pretty good move higher. So uh, that's kind of um, a discounter in the realm of, of, of a Walmart, um, you know, the Dollar Generals, things like that. Just areas when the economy is struggling, which we know. We know a lot of people are hurting right now. A lot of people are out of work. And, um, you know, there's stimulus money coming. Some of it's going to move on toys. Oh, here's another one that I didn't even show you this one. Forgot to show you this one. I can't believe I left this one out of the illustration. The subscribers got this one too on PII. Look at that. Toys, right? Watercraft, four wheelers, all that kind of stuff. Toys. <laughs> Explodes to the upside. Why? Why? Because there's expectation that a lot of stimulus money is going to go there. It had short interest because people are like, the economy's not good. Who's going to go buy toys? People that get the stimulus checks are going to go buy them. That one, that's an alert for our subscribers as well. They actually got that one too. I just forgot to put that one in the list. So our subscribers have captured all of those moves to the upside. But again, I, I want to stress this. Please don't get sucked into thinking that this is the way things are always going to be. It will reverse. And those kind of vertical moves are going to be to the downside. At some point, we will be doing one of these events. And they'll say, remember when we talked about that back on January 26th of 2021? Look what's happening now. It's coming. I'm telling you, it's coming. This is, this is an attack. Get rid of the shorts when there's no short sellers left or very few short sellers left. The 
the smart guys are going to turn their tide and they're going to go to the downside. It's just, they're about making money. They don't really care what the fundamentals are. That's why we're technical traders. They don't care what the underlying fundamentals are. They're looking at stuff like short interest and those kind of things to figure out what's the easiest route to making a stock move. They don't care whether it's to the upside or the downside. But that's how it works. That's how trading works. And you can say, well, that's not, it's how it works. I'm just telling you that's how it works. Stocks don't always go up. Please write that down. Write that down somewhere and put it on your desk wherever you're a trader, especially if you're on the Robinhood platform and you're seeing all these little stocks go up. Make a note somewhere. Stocks do not always go up. All right, so we have a little bit of time left here. Well, actually past the 45 minutes, but uh, I'll answer some of these uh, questions here. Netflix, when's their... When was their earnings report? There you go. There's when it was. 20th. All right. So, boom, explosion to the upside. And you know how I hate that. Um, if you've listened to any of those, any of these broadcasts, you know I do not like these vertical moves, especially when it's accompanied with a gap like that. I hate that. Um, because you never know when that gap's going to get filled. It will get filled one day. I don't know if it'll get filled now. It's trying to hold above there at 560. It's trying really hard to hold that level. And the DMI is supportive of, yeah, there was some strength behind that move. We may hold 560 and continue the upside. We're in a wave three or wave five targets above 620. Looking at that, I would have a hard time telling somebody that wanted to go long Netflix not to do it. It looks good, but man, I don't like that. It's, it just, I just don't like the gaps. Gaps get filled. It's another one of those rules, like the 10-day moving average. The problem is you don't know when they're going to get filled. Like, look at this one back here. See, there's a gap, and it didn't fill it there. It, it, was, it occurred in October. It didn't get filled to December, so it's two months later that it got filled. Sometimes it's longer than that. They do eventually get filled. Sometimes they get filled in two days, but other times it takes longer. But right now, based on the DMI, yeah, it's hard to say that stock doesn't want to go higher from here. Camping World, Marcus Limonis, one of the better shows, The Prophet, that was on CNBC for a while. And why has this been working? You know, it's one of those things where who's going to go buy motorhomes and campers and stuff? It's, it's one of those activities like I'm a golfer, right? My first career was a golf pro. Golfing is one of those things you can do in the great outdoors and you're not breathing on people next to you. So it's something that you can do in this COVID world where uh, of social distancing and everything. That's what people are looking at, these kind of stocks. So it's not in any sort of a wave five pattern. So come back here, that puts even more emphasis on our directional indicators and really good spot here. Who asked about this one? Bowena, that's a really good, uh, a really good spot, but you're at a very important level right here. You can see it tried yesterday and it couldn't get above it. And it, we've got too extended. Let's, where's the 10-day moving average? Yeah, see yesterday, trying to break above that separation, it couldn't do it. Today's a better looking day. It's an inside day, meaning the high was lower than the high of the previous day. The low is higher than the low of the previous day. So this entire bar is inside the high and low of yesterday, which means something's likely to happen in tomorrow's trade. Um, but if you're long this, I see no reason to exit this position. If you're looking to enter it, I'd want to see it break above 40 first. Uh, let it get above that 40 level. It's pretty surprising that through all of this pandemic stuff that this stock has stayed this sideways. So this could be one of those, you know, we've talked about the rotation and we've given you a couple ideas, the THCX, XLY, both of those are doing really well on our YouTube videos of where you may want to rotate uh, money for this, uh, this coming year with everything that's going on in addition to a new administration. Um, it, when you have rotation, a lot of the people look for 
where are stocks that have underperformed? You know, you have a pretty big move in the market. What is a stock or a company with a good fundamental basis that hasn't performed with the rest of the market? Now, this isn't that short assault that's going on right now. Uh, this is just back to more regular trading. And this would be a stock that you could say that, yeah, it did nothing for six, seven months here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven months. It didn't do anything. And now it's trying to break again. So that's a stock that has underperformed over the past six months. Some money could be looking in there. Let's see what the volume looks like. Um, some volume yesterday, you, got, you know, this, this could actually bring in some above average volume and make a move. There's not big volume has come into it yet. So that, that's a really interesting, good looking stock. Thanks for sharing that. Um, uh, David, thank you. We, we have hit some home runs. We, we've had a really good week. Thank you. Appreciate that so much. Um, Microsoft, well, they reported earnings after hours and we have a strangle on that in our high value because it's a high dollar stock. Uh, here's where it closed today, but it was after hours trading right here at 247 um, because they had a great earnings report. Now, that doesn't mean anything, right? Because a lot of stuff can change between now and when the market opens tomorrow. But um, potential is that that's a really nice profitable strangle tomorrow if it does open up here at 247, which is where it closed in the after hours session. So here was the level here. It got interesting today because it broke above 230, which was important. Well, again, because of a good earnings report, if it holds the after hours move, then uh, you'll see a big move uh, up there and we'll be closing our position off. Uh, Tesla is two days away from its earnings and we are profitable. We have this one in our high value portfolio too, which again is just a fancy name for um, putting on strangles that you you can't do for the normal risk we usually do for our, our subscriber alerts. It's usually a max of $500 of risk per alert. And um, you can't do that on an $860 stock. So we had a lot of our subscribers that said, well, I have a larger account. What if I want to do that? And so we said, oh, fair question. <laughs> so we created uh, a different type of subscription for people that had larger accounts and man, the interest blew me away. Obviously something that I uh, wasn't aware of was as great a need as it, it was. So Tesla is already profitable, uh, not by a tremendous amount, but it's already profitable. And the uh, IV is being pumped into it because people expect it to move. Now, because it hasn't broken out a ton, if it breaks to the upside tomorrow, we'll probably go ahead and just take it off and not wait for the earnings report and the IV crush. If it doesn't, if it backs back down, we'll just wait. We have plenty of time and the stock is gonna move. You can see it's moved vertically to the upside here and there's nothing, thin clean air above it. They could run to a thousand really quick, which if you look at the Ellie wave pattern is says it's going to 1140. So Ellie would say, quit worrying about the downside. We're going to 1140. But uh, I've mentioned this in our recordings as well. I, I know Elliot's views on triangles. I think he was amazing for identifying this consolidation pattern on stocks that break. I just am a touch more conservative. And I'm like, let's cover both sides. And we found a way to do it with the very unique setup of a strangle. It's a lot harder if you did just a normal straddle or a normal strangle, a lot harder to make money. But by the way we do them, where we put the math of the Delta curve in our favor as much as mathematically possible, it gives us the opportunity to trade both sides. Now, you know, maybe we don't make quite as much of a gain as if we picked a direction and got it right, but we don't have to pick direction, which is the key. And you don't have to, you know, stay awake all night, chewing on your fingernails, wondering what their uh, earnings report's gonna be. You don't care, it's as long as it moves the stock. Who cares what they say? As long as it moves it, that's fine. So that's those two. Uh, AMD. A lot of you either ask about the same stocks or you're married to your specific stocks. Um, 
you know, AMD was moving to the upside because it was kicking Intel's butt until Intel changed their CEO. <clears throat> and then Intel exploded to the upside. So all of a sudden it's like, oh, and, and AMD hit the brakes. You can see this movement that they were moving to the upside when they were just destroying uh, Intel and Intel was falling behind. But now they changed the CEO and everybody's like, oh, okay, well, let's wait and see. So the stocks really hadn't, hasn't done much for a while. Still has a five wave target, nice wave four correction. So that wave four is not only around the 61.8% FIB level that you know I like, it's also at a really major point of support going back to August. August, September, broke above it, couldn't hold it. Resistance again in October, resistance again in November, broke above it, support now. Still looks like it wants to move to 105. It's just, it's not on a big old momentum run right now um, because uh, tractor supply, yeah, that one was on the list, wasn't it? It's right there on my notes. Um, well, everything was looking good till today. So we wanted to keep an eye on, and I'm assuming we said we wanted to see it break above through here, which it tried to do and held that. And tomorrow means a lot for this stock. So if we get follow through to the downside, we may be creating the wave four. Um, if not, if it bounces right back up, then we're still in line to run back up to the 170 level. So the fact that it broke this area of support right there around 155, uh, tomorrow is really important. It's the same thing, whether you're breaking a re support resistance level to the upside, support resistance to the downside, the second day, follow through a confirmation day. So if it breaks to the downside and closes lower tomorrow, then we're creating the wave four. We're in the wave four correction. It still doesn't mean that it doesn't turn around and hit the wave five high. Remember, there's one, two, three, four, five waves. And it's just when does the wave four form? That's the challenge when you're dealing with a wave three. So we'll see. But tomorrow is key. So if, you, if you're in that one, tomorrow's really important to see what happens. Uh, Robert, good name, by the way, talking about those stocks that I was showing that have skyrocketed and they're in the stratosphere. And even though the puts are expensive, would I agree it might be worth a high value position? Uh, when you see something like this, yeah, that one I think is, that is just, there is nothing fundamental with GameStop that justifies that. So from that standpoint, yeah, I would say that one is, you know, it, remember now that these are speculative trades because we're not trading LA wave patterns. We're not using our indicators. We're following chart patterns just on their own. And when you see something vertical like that, yeah, that would be one that I would, you know, here, here's the 10-day here's the moving average down here, right above 60, almost a, you know, 80 plus points away. So yeah, that one would be one that I'd be like, that would be worth it. Because once they run all the shorts out, guess where it's going? It's going right back down there. Um, so it, it's a good point, Robert. Just be careful on doing that in general, because remember when a stock is too far away from its 10 day moving average, it doesn't have to come back down. Sometimes it can go sideways. And if you buy expensive options, you know, after something volatile like this happens, because you've noted the options are expensive and then it goes sideways, well, guess what? They take all that volatility out and it's a double whammy. Not only do you not get the directional move back down, but the volatility comes out too and you lose money quickly. But in something like that, for a speculative trade, I would say, yeah, that that's 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 worth a shot. So, um, great point. And there's you know there's tons of them. It's a it is amazing what's occurred uh, in January. Like I said, I thought it was going to be more volatile, but this is a this is not what I was thinking about. Antx. Um, 
an FDA approved drug, so I'm guessing that's not anthrax, huh? <laughs> Sorry. That would have been ANTX, I guess. Um, well, it's made a nice move. But here we are, and this is this is gonna be the tell-all. You know, it's a really an important level. And then when you look at the moving averages. I would I would go with a watch list on this one too. So I, I would look at this one. In fact, I am going to make a note of this one, ATNX. So the the reason that I say that is let's go through this. We've separated from the ten day moving average. Well, it's overbought, and now it's at a major point of resistance. It's hard for a stock that is already stretched and overbought to break through a major point of resistance. What you would like to see is this kind of stuff here. You'd like to see it consolidate right here for a bit and then blow through it. That would be your bullish case is to see that type of thing occur because it goes back to, you know, July, August, September, November. That's major resistance where we are right now. And it's just hard to imagine that it's going to blow through that and hold it tomorrow with this set, maybe it does, but it's hard for me to imagine that. What I, again, would prefer to see is this stock just kind of go sideways for a few days, let that 10-day moving average catch up, and then go blow on through it. It's not in a five-wave pattern. ADX is about to break through 20. Man, it looks really good. It looks really good. I just, I just think it needs a touch of rest. Maybe I'm wrong, but... It's on the watch list, so we'll look at it again next week, but really good. Juniper. Golly, there's one way of it. I think we looked at this once before, but man, Juniper Networks was traded this all the time. 1999, 2000, that area. It was, and here we go. So we're off to a nice run. Then we start to go vertical. Now we're right here at resistance again at 26 and it's run right back that wave five at you know, that 61.8 percent extension on the wave five so that's classic and it's run right back up to there that's what it's supposed to do the dmi still looks good now that's not quite so overbought this one could break through that level on this run there's room in the dmi it's not 27 This is, this is at a point where this could really explode higher. There is so much resistance now, though. The, the easy money has been made, but, I mean, look at that. Going back, where are we? We're in 2018 now. So going back two years in this whole 26, 27 range, there is tons of resistance all the way up to nearly 30. But if it could break above that, you talk about running the shorts out. You know, maybe that's what they're looking at on this one because you're up here at resistance. Um, I don't know what the short percentage is on this stock, but that's one that could be ripe for something along those lines where it just absolutely rockets to the upside. We'll see, but it needs to get above 26. And again, there's, it, there's resistance at 26, 27, 20, all pretty much between here and 30. It could be a bumpy road, but if it can make it, it could – Something could really happen there. Um, well, let's keep an eye on it. So we got stuff to look at for next week. Julianne made $3,700 on iRobot. Good for you. Congratulations. Open. P-E-N. Man, time goes by fast when we do this, doesn't it? Uh, it's consolidating. Yeah, it looks like a really good case for a strangle. It really does. It's a nice pattern there. Potential breakout. Um, 
Support in around 20, 32, yeah, 12 points for a $30 stock. That could be a really nice strangle. These fun cashes, it just, yeah, hasn't quite got down to 13 yet, which is why I hadn't shown up on the search, but it's awfully doggone close. Yeah, that's good looking. Um, okay, we'll do shop and Bitcoin, and then we'll, uh, we'll wrap this one up for tonight. So sh shop. Closing this stuff off. I don't want to run out of virtual memory here. I have been known to do that before. So Shopify is interesting. It's, it's right where it, it needs to hold here. If it doesn't hold here, then it gets ugly. Um, if it doesn't hold this area, then it's coming back down here around 880 because there's nothing in between there so today wasn't a good day uh it needs to hold this it needs to hold this level the dmi is not horrible i mean the ada or the positive directional indicator didn't like today's move that's understandable um, so it's trying to build support here on that level right at 1200 it just need, it needs to hold this level here it needs it needs to hold that and if it can turn around and bounce back to the upside then you can have something going here but if it doesn't hold it then that's that's where you're going right back down uh, bitcoin um, is pretty much doing what it said it needed to do which is rest now recording it said it needs to relax and rest and it has and um so now you can see we're back in tune with a 10 day moving average. You can see that we've got a really nice triangle pattern here in Bitcoin. So you can make a case for a descending triangle or you can make a case for a symmetrical triangle. This is where I say it doesn't matter. It's a triangle, it's gonna break out. So at some point in time, Bitcoin is gonna move but it listened, it, it needed a rest following that big move to the upside. So what's happened now is, I don't know if you've seen this before, but that wave five was way into the future. Now things are condensing a little bit. Why? Because the wave four got labeled uh, on the 22nd. They labeled the wave four because right at 38% FIB level. So it jumped back up. If that holds, we break out of this triangle, then we're off and running to this 52,000 level still has to hold here at 30,000. That's key. It needs to hold that level. It broke through it enough to create the wave four, but honestly, it needs to hold right in that level. It could it could even come back down here to 28,000, but it it needs to hold into this area if it's going to run back up to the wave five here anytime soon. So um, it's it's doing exactly what what it needs to be doing. Um, you know, it's not going to go up every single day. It's a really good looking pattern now, though. It's exactly what it needs to be doing. Thanks, everybody. Really appreciate your attention. Really appreciate your time. Look forward to talking again next week. Have a great week. Talk to you soon.